Alright. Uh, oh, jeez. Why does this happen? Ah, oh, cold. Foot down. Okay. Limits involving infinity. Uh, in our textbook, this is actually the last section in Chapter 1, but I'm going to add a few things after this, so we're not quite ready for a test on limits yet. I'm going to dive into a little bit more calculus and derivative type stuff. Uh, but anyway, limits involving infinity means x is either approaching infinity or infinity is the answer. And whenever I, when I say infinity here, uh, negative infinity also applies. So if x is approaching negative infinity or if negative infinity is the answer. Um, so let's start with the easier ones first, and that is as x is approaching infinity. And if you have a nice rational function, which rational function by definition means you're dividing two polynomials, nice clean equations. If you have a rational function, you can pretend you're looking for a horizontal asymptote. Uh, and if you remember those rules, that's when you compare degrees on top and bottom. Uh, for number one here, degree on top is two, degree on bottom is three. The bottom is bigger, so the answer is zero, right? Just because the bottom degree is bigger than the top. Uh, number two here, looking at the degrees, x is approaching infinity. Degree on top is five, degree on bottom is two. That means there is no horizontal asymptote. Now, there are things like slant and parabolic and cubic asymptotes and, and things like that. Uh, but this limit, since there is no horizontal asymptote, the limit does not exist. However, in the case of a does not exist limit, you always will try to specify with infinity or negative infinity if applicable. Uh, so what I'm going to do to determine what's happening here uh, we know the limit doesn't exist, but if you think this is a graph or a function where x is going to the right forever, the graph has to be doing something. Uh, and since the graph is not leveling off, there's no asymptote, that means this graph is always going up or it's always going down. So this answer will be one of either infinity or negative infinity. That right end has to be doing something. And the way I determine that is you just plug in a big honking number for x. Uh, and really, we only have to worry about the powerful terms. My powerful term on top is 3x to the fifth. My powerful term on bottom is x squared. The others are insignificant. So if I plug in infinity, 3 times infinity to the fifth, that's a positive number. So I have a positive divided by infinity squared is also positive, which means this answer, even though technically the limit doesn't exist, we will specify with positive infinity because my numerator and denominator are both positive. Um, as here I am, x is approaching infinity. Um, degree on top and bottom is equal. If the degrees are equal, notice I have x cubed, and I have x cubed. If the degrees are equal, you will divide the leading coefficients, which are negative 5 and 2. And if the degrees are equal, you can just say, hey, the answer is negative 5 halves. And that's if the degrees are equal which I've said like seven times, if the degrees are equal. Okay, moving on. Um, that's the short way, and that is acceptable. You don't have to show painful work if you have a, clean, a nice, clean one like this. But there is a technical, mathy way of working it. So we'll go the Math League of America approach to solving these limits. If you happen to forget the rules, this actually comes in handy because it allows a workaround for this problem. Um, let's see, I'm going to rewrite the problem and give myself a little bit of room. I'm going to write it as 3 minus 5x to the third. We've, I'm going to leave a little bit of room over 2x cubed plus 12. And the reason I left that room is because the way we're going to solve this is we identify the high power of x, which we have uh, no x's, x cubed, x cubed, and no x's. Overall, my highest power of x is x cubed. So I'm going to divide every single term by x cubed. And then I will simplify those terms. 3 over x cubed doesn't clean up. 5x cubed over x cubed is 5. That's minus 5. Over here, the x cubes cancel, leaving me 2 plus 12 over x cubed. And now that I've done that, I've divided everything by the high power of x, I'm going to essentially plug in infinity to this. So if I plug in infinity, 3 over infinity squared in the world of limits, any number divided by infinity is going to be 0. So in the world of limits, anything divided by infinity is approaching 0. So this thing, 3 over infinity cubed, that's 0. 5 is a constant. Over 2 is a constant. 
Uh, we'll see here I have 12 divided by infinity. A number divided by something incredibly huge like that is approaching 0. And 0 minus 5 over 2 plus 0. And you get the exact same answer that you would get if you just divided the coefficients. But this is a long way around if you want to work out the problem and you forget the rules. Sometimes it's better to do the Math League of America method, um, especially if you have like radicals in your problem. So here's one where I'm going to do that. Um, the degrees on top and bottom are equal. You have x to the first. This is the square root of x squared, so that is also x to the first. So I know there's going to be a horizontal asymptote. Uh, the way we're going to figure this one out, my high power of x, I have x to the first, no x's, no x's. That's an x squared, but since it's under the square root, it's still an x to the first. So I'm going to divide every single term by x to the first. You have to be careful under the square root. If you want to divide by x to the first, you actually have to write it as x squared, because the square root of x squared is x to the first. So under the radical, it's x squared, and then we clean everything up. x over x is 1 plus 2 over x divided by the square root of x squared over x squared cancels. So that's just going to be 9 plus 1 over x squared. And now I'll plug in zero, infinity. Let's see. So 1 plus 2 over infinity, that's 1 plus 0 over square root of 9 plus 1 over infinity is 0. That's 1 over 3. Good, 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 good. Good. If you have a radical, you're probably safer doing this. And some of y'all may be able to look at that and think, oh, well, it's 1 and the square root of 9 is 3, so it's 1 third. Uh, it's safer for the radical ones to do the Math League of America approach. Um, here's another one, and this one's really tricky because at first you're thinking, well, it's not even a fraction, so my degree on top is bigger. Uh, but this one, what we're actually going to have to do to find the horizontal asymptote, you want to see it as a fraction. And you would like to have x's on top and bottom. So the way I'm going to force this to have x's on top and bottom is I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So 9x squared plus x plus 3x. And we'll multiply by conjugates on top and bottom. 9x squared plus x plus 3x. See, on top I multiply that out. Radical times radical. 9x squared plus x. The conjugate, so I don't have to do inners and outers. Negative 3x times positive 3x is negative 9x squared over, uh, no, that cleans up. So 9x squared plus x plus 3x. Clean up. Clean up. 9x squared's cancel, and I'm down to x over the square root of 9x squared plus x plus 3x. And now I've turned it into a fraction with variables on top and bottom. Now I'm going to go through with the Math League of America approach. Um, degree on top is 1. Degree on bottom, uh, the high power of x is 1. I have a 1 here, and the square root of x squared is 1. So I'm going to divide everything by x to the 1th. Divide everything by x to the 1st. Uh, here I'm under the square root, so we have to divide by x squared. Divide by x squared, and then we'll clean that up. On top is 1. On bottom x squared's cancels, so that's 9. Here, one of the x's cancels, so that's plus 1 over x. x is cancel, plus 3. And now I will plug in my infinity. I have 1 on top, square root of 9 plus 1 over infinity in the world of limits is 0, plus 3. And that cleans up to 1 6. Uh, that is one of the more complicated infinite limits. Um, because you have to do that pesky little conjugate thing. Uh, let's see, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, limits with infinity as an answer. So now I'm approaching a specific number, but the problem here is when I plug in my number, I get 5 divided by 0. Okay, that's not indeterminate. Hey, go away. Okay, that's not indeterminate. Um, if you have 0 over 0, that means you're going to try to factor and cancel. But a number over 0 can be three different things. This, the answer could be infinity. It could be negative infinity, or my limit will not exist. Uh, where's the rest of my n? There it is. So my limit will not exist. The way I figure this out, uh, this is a one-sided limit, which actually makes it easier. If I'm approaching 3 from the left side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a number very close to 3 on the left side. I'm going to do something like 2.9. And if I plug in 2.9, this function is going to be 5 over 
3.9 minus 3. And all I care about is signs. 5 is positive. The sign on bottom, as I come from the left side of 3, 2.9 minus 3 is negative. Positive over negative gives me a negative. That means this limit is going to be approaching negative infinity. Uh, one-sided limits will always have an answer. You're never going to answer does not exist with a one-sided limit because um, it will either approach a number. If it doesn't approach a number, the answer will be positive or negative infinity. Um, so there's number one. Just plug in a number real close to that side. Now let's try another one, two, from the right of this function. Uh, if I try to plug in two, three minus two is one, two minus two is zero. So that means I need to determine whether this is positive or negative infinity. Right side of two, plug in something like 2.1. If I plug in 2.1, 3 minus 2.1 is, let's see, 3 minus 2.1 is a positive number. On the bottom, 2.1 minus 2 is a positive number, which is when you divide two positives, you get a positive, which tells me that this answer is going to be positive infinity. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you get a number divided by zero, this is going to be our approach. I have one more, and then I'll call it quits. How far are we? 11 minutes. Not too bad. Um, now, this one's going to be a little bit tougher because I'm approaching five, but I didn't specify which side, which means we're actually going to have to do both sides of this. Well, I guess I need to plug in five first. If I plug in five, I get five divided by zero squared. Okay. So since plugging in failed, I got five over a number. Now I'm going to have to look at both sides of this limit. So the limit as x approaches 5 from the left of x over x minus 5 squared. I'm going to plug in something on the left side of 5, like maybe 4.9. If I plug in 4.9 for x, my top is positive. My bottom, since I'm squaring something, 4.9 minus 5 is negative, but when you square it, you get positive. So my right side is approaching positive infinity. Well, now I'm going to see what's happening on the left side. Limit as x approaches, what? That was the left side, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's do the right side. My bad. Uh, I'm going to plug in something on the right side. So something on the right side of 5 might be like, I don't know, let's try 5.1. And you notice I like to get really, really, really close. Um, some of y'all, you could probably get away if you used 6, but... When limits, where limits are concerned, 6 is very far away from 5. I like to stay as close as I possibly can. So I'm plugging in 5.1 here. 5.1 on top is positive. On bottom, 5.1 minus 5 is positive. It's going to remain positive when you square it. And so my right side is also approaching infinity. Since left and right sides are both approaching positive infinity, then I'm going to take those answers to conclude that the overall limit is approaching infinity. Had I gotten different answers for left and right, then this limit would not exist. But I got the same answer, so the limit is infinity. And there we go. We'll polish this up in class on Friday.